Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household without exception, all his companions without exception. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to grant us all, every single one of us, goodness and to grant us the ability to follow him, to understand his sunnah, the ability to learn it, to put it into practice and to convey it to others. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, yesterday we took a look at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa and I made mention of the fact that humankind all come from one human being and that is Adam alayhi salatu was salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in order for us to fulfill each other's rights. We are all part of one family, as we said. However, we become close family with those whom we know, although we are related to everyone else. And in order to fulfill the rights of your relatives, you will need to know who they are. And this is why lineage in Islam is sacred. You need to know your father, your mother. You cannot cheat and lie regarding who you are and who your father is. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. If we would like to save ourselves from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the punishment of breaking ties of kinship, we need to know who these relatives are. So with the new generation, we spend less time knowing who our family members are. We don't even want to mix with them. We don't want to interact with them. We don't want to say hello to them or salam to them, for example. And in fact, like I said, we don't even know who they are. You meet a person every day, but five years later, you find out that's your uncle. Subhanallah. That's not good enough. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it quite clear in the opening verses of Surah An-Nisa. And immediately after that, he makes mention in verse number two of the issue of the orphans and the wealth left behind by the parents of the orphans, more so the father. And the fact that we are not allowed to usurp the wealth of the orphans. This issue of inheritance is something very sacred. The wealth belongs to Allah. You had custodianship of it whilst you were alive. The minute your eyes close, that wealth belongs to someone else. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chooses whom that wealth will go to after you die to a great extent. He only gives you a limited say in where you want that money to go. And I'm sure a lot of us would know the rules and regulations in detail. If you don't, please go out and learn the laws of inheritance. It's one of the only subjects that are discussed or that is discussed at great length in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa. Named after the women folk, do you know why? A lot of us cheat our women regarding inheritance. A lot of us do not give the right amount and portion and the right quantity to our women folk. We cheat our sisters. We cheat our daughters. We sometimes even cheat our mothers and those who are related to us in terms of female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This is why Allah says, Give the orphans their wealth and do not deceive them by changing their good wealth for your bad merchandise. Sometimes there is stock that is left behind by a person. They have orphan children and you are a person who happily looks at the stock and you see this is good stock. Let me swap it. Let me change it with mine. So now you change it and you give them that which is bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Save yourselves from the fire of Jahannam by fulfilling the laws of inheritance correctly. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of all these laws of inheritance and he instructs us to do it as soon as possible without delay. People have passed away. Don't wait for a generation, two generations before you sort your matters out. Sort them out immediately in order for you to achieve the mercy of Allah and be protected from the fire or from the punishment of Allah in this world and the next. Do you know, after he makes mention of all these proportions in Surah An-Nisa, he says, verse number 14, 
ومن يعص الله ورسوله ويتعد حدوده يدخله نارا خالدا فيها وله عذاب مهين Whoever transgresses against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and goes beyond the limits regarding inheritance for them will be a severe punishment in hellfire forever. He uses the term Khalidan Fiha or Khalidina Fiha, which means they will dwell therein forever, everlasting. This is in order to show us how serious it is when we do not distribute the inheritance according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, a few dollars, a few rands, a few pounds, what are we going to gain by it? We will actually earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are usurping the wealth of someone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may he save us from this punishment that he is making mention of. He says, They will have a disgraceful punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So what about seeking forgiveness? We all seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is when? When do you seek the forgiveness of Allah? Allah says, Tawbah and repentance is not for a person who constantly commits sin and waits for the time when they become old. And then when they see the angel of death, when death comes to them, then they quickly say, Oh Allah, forgive me now. Now forgive me. You know, it's like you're throwing in the towel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Allah says in verse number 18, regarding how we should be repenting to him regarding the fact that we should not be delaying up to the point of death Tawbah is not for the one who constantly commits sin upon sin up to the point of death. When the angel of death comes, then he says, now I'm turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, repent as soon as possible. Seek the forgiveness of Allah in order for you to be saved. From what? From the day you will die, perhaps without having sought the forgiveness of Allah, then one wonders what will happen in the hereafter. All these warnings have been issued we can indeed protect ourselves by asking Allah's forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter regarding business matters, don't deceive each other when it comes to business. Be open, be clear. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about the business people and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَإِن صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا If the two of them are truthful, and if they are open regarding the commodity that they are selling, then Allah will give them barakah. Barakah means blessing. You may not have the best of deal, but you will definitely have the best in terms of in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have barakah, blessing. You have a little bit, you were honest. Look, I'm selling you this car. It's damaged. It, used, it was damaged here and I repaired it. It has a little wobble, the wheel. Perhaps we might need to change this and that, but this is it. Here we use the term footstuts. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? Which means take it as it is. Don't come back. But you tell them exactly what is wrong with the vehicle. Then there is a price that you put forth. There will be a bit of bargaining and you sell it. But never ever knowingly tell them nothing wrong with the car. Never been in an accident. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely unique. I've always serviced it as per the book. And you can see and the book is forged and it was damaged and everything happened. You might earn a little bit more in terms of rands. But wallahi, you won't achieve anything. You will never have saved yourself from the torment. Listen to what Allah says. Verse number 29 of Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil batili illa illa an takuna tijaratan an taradim minkum. O oh, you who believe, do not consume the wealth of one another. Do not consume the wealth of one another deceivingly. Unless it is through the happiness of both of you. That is the only time that this deal will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both parties are happy. I'm happy with the fact that I sold it. You are happy with the fact that 
you have purchased it and at the same time you go away praying for me and I go away praying for you I go home and say what a good deal and you go home and say what a good buy mashallah that's how it should be may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding so in this way you will save yourself from dispute from hatred from split amongst you and so on if you were to cheat someone in business it will catch up with you at some stage and your name will be spoilt. The whole world will begin to know this person is actually a cheat. If you go to their business, they will rob you. Don't do business with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this. And then Allah says in the same verse towards the end. Never ever. Allah says, do not kill yourselves for indeed Allah is very merciful upon you. Some of the scholars make mention of the connection between business and suicide. Sometimes people because of financial difficulty and hardship, they feel, you know what? It's the end of the road. Now there's nothing I can do. I'm on the street. I've lost this, lost that. Take a look at the credit crunch of the United States a few years ago. So many people committed suicide because the bank came along, took back the house, then took back the car, then took back the television, then took back so many other things that were on the street anyway. And the person had lost his job, retrenched, he couldn't pay back and he had absolutely nothing yet. Five days earlier, he was leading a luxurious life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hey, be honest in business, in your dealings. Live according to your means. Don't be shy to downgrade when you cannot afford. When you are shy to downgrade, you will definitely throw yourself into destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from debt. And at the same time, may Allah help those who are in debt to fulfill that debt. My brothers and sisters, ask Allah to help you to fulfill the debt and work towards it. Allah will open the doors. Allah will open your doors. But at the same time, also, my brothers and sisters, what we do need to know, suicide is never an option to run away from your problems. Never an option. Allah says here, clearly, do not kill yourselves. It is prohibited to commit suicide. And Allah says, Inna Allah, kana bikum rahima. Allah is definitely most merciful upon you. How can you do that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from being punished for doing the wrong things. Rather, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on every single one of us. Then some people have more than others in terms of virtue, in terms of power and authority, in terms of wealth, in terms of so many other things. It is Allah who chooses who has more, who has less. Some people have less, but remember everyone has something special and unique from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not shared by others or shared by very few. You need to search for that. You need to look for that. Even the beggar on the street who might not have anything in terms of a home and a car and so on, but he will be having a certain gift that Allah has bestowed upon him. If he is prepared to search for it, he will find it. You thank Allah for that. Sometimes they are healthier than those who are wealthy and in the hospitals. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those who are sick and ill. I mean, so my brothers and sisters, Allah says, Verse number 32, speaking about the male and female, Allah makes some into male and some female. It was the decision and choice of Allah. I cannot belittle a female and a female cannot belittle me just because I'm a male and she's a female. I need to realize Allah has given virtue to one above the other in certain aspects and to the other above this one in certain aspects. Allah says, don't wish that which Allah has bestowed upon others. Don't wish for it. Don't become envious in the wrong way. No, don't become envious in the wrong way. Don't become jealous of one another. Allah has given that person, Alhamdulillah, make dua for them. In fact, if you look at verse number 54 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah asks the question clearly, are you a jealous person? Are they the ones who are jealous regarding the favors that Allah has bestowed upon some of the people? Allah says, don't do that. Don't. It will harm you. The hadith says, Inna al -hasada al -hasanat kama -nar al -hatab. Indeed, jealousy will eat away your good deeds in the same way that a flame eats away at a dry log. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is something we need to learn. If you want to protect yourself, 
You want to protect your heart from being damaged, from being dirtied, from being blackened, for example. It is important for you to make sure that it is free from jealousy, from envy, and from wishing in a wrong way for what Allah has bestowed upon others. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something extremely important. Remember, this is Surah An-Nisa. It starts off with mention being made of inheritance. Laws of inheritance, don't cheat the women. Then it goes into verses regarding dispute between husband and wife. Marital discord. No one gets married in order to divorce. No one gets married in order to have problems. People get married because they love each other, subhanallah, because they want to marry each other, because they would love to, for example, live together. But sadly, sometimes when you do get together, you realize, you know what, I made a mistake here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand. When we have used the wrong criteria, that's when we start scratching our heads. When you use the correct criteria and we've spoken about it, you select a spouse based on the deen and the character. That doesn't mean you marry someone that you don't like to look at. No, they need to be reasonable, at least in terms of looks. Alhamdulillah, they need to be reasonable. You need to like them to a certain extent. You, they need to be, as we say, a little spark, mashallah. And it's a sunnah to look at them. But at the same time, your criteria, your deciding factor, you might want to compromise a little bit in terms of looks. You might want to compromise in terms of wealth. In fact, that is something that is secondary. But when it comes to character, conduct and deen, commitment to Allah, you don't compromise that. That's what we're saying. You don't compromise that. That's going to be the parent of your child. But then if a problem does happen, Allah says in verse number 35 of Surah An-Nisa, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَا إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا When you fear that there's going to be a split now between husband and wife, you don't just issue divorce. Today the sickness we have, young men, they get up and something is wrong in the home. They enter and you forgot to turn on the heater. You know, mashallah, we are now, uh, you know, passing the, through the coldest days of this winter so far. Today, mashallah, freezing cold. Alhamdulillah. But if your wife or your husband forgot to turn on the heater, it does not mean it's the end of the world. People say, right, go back to your father's house. You were not caring for me. You didn't know anything and I divorce you. It's over. Astaghfirullah. Wallahi, people are as petty as that. That will result in a person being cast into the punishment of Allah, the wrath of Allah. How can you treat someone's child like that? How can you treat people worse than animals, worse than dogs and cats? If it was your dog and your cat, you would, I, I suppose you would care for it much more. You don't do that. If you really have a serious matter, number one, you try and resolve it between yourselves in a good way. It will be give and take, mashallah. Sometimes, you know, a person who is violent, a person who is abusive, who is vulgar, there is a limit beyond which we cannot take it. We can't take it anymore. Don't tell us you need to just make your house, make your home. You know, you, you got married. Now you need to live here. No, if it is really abusive and nothing is happening and we've given it a period of time, we need to go to the next step. What's the next step? You involve a responsible member from her family, a responsible member from your family. You explain to the two of them what has happened. Either party explains and then those two will sit together as per the injunction of the Quran. They will come up with a solution. And if you really want to resolve the problem, you will definitely be able to come with a solution. You will definitely be able to come with a solution because you want to solve the problem. But if you are not prepared to resolve, if you want just to prove who was right and wrong, you're never going to get anywhere. But you need to sometimes even say, look, I'm sorry, let's start again. And inshallah, we make things work. Alhamdulillah, things will happen. And by the will of Allah, if you are really sincere, if both parties are sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in yurida islahan. If both of them's intention is that they want the solution, Allah says Allah will grant them that. But if one goes in with the wrong intention and the other one goes in with the wrong intention and the friends of one of them are convincing her or him, you know what, get out of this marriage. You know what, it's not good enough. I'm sure you can do better. That advice is not always valid. It's not correct. No. 
Some people have not got along. They have been through bigger problems than you and I, and they have got back again after that and become closer than you are with your spouse or I am with mine. It has happened, but it requires dedication. It requires sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if nothing worked and you tried and really at the end of the day, things happen to break beyond repair, you know, it was irreconcilable. We could not reconciliate at all. Then verse number 130 says, If the two of them decide finally and ultimately to split, Allah will bestow from his favor upon both of them. Allah indeed is broad in favor. He will bestow upon both of them. Protect yourself from mudslinging. Those who after a divorce speak about their ex-spouse in a negative way. They are opening a can of worms and they are making themselves prone to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to go into all those details. You don't have to tell the world, my ex-husband was like this and like that and like this and like that. And I fixed him in this way and that way. And this is what I did. And ultimately now I'm divorced and I'm happy and I'm excited. You don't have to say all of that. That will come back to haunt you in this world first. And then in the next, people will talk about you as well. People will say the nastiest things. I don't know why what happens in our communities and societies is after a divorce, people become so ugly, so ugly. They utter the worst words that are unacceptable, untrue. And it's only to justify that. You know what? We were right. They were wrong. That's all. There's no point in doing that. There is absolutely no point. Get on with your life. It's too short for you to go and talk about other people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with the best of spouses. And today we dedicate a dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who have gone through divorce with spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. But whoever is divorced, protect your tongue. Save yourself by not speaking negative about your ex. Save yourself from the wrath in this world and in the next by protecting your tongue. Don't say bad words. Someone asked you, say, you know what? We didn't get along and he was a good person in his own way. He had his weaknesses. I had my weaknesses. We didn't get along and we decided to part ways. May Allah bless him and may Allah bless me. That's the way a mu'min should be speaking. The difficulty is we don't do that. We want to prove, no, he was like this. She was like that. We don't see why that should happen as mu'mineen. In fact, we are instructed to protect ourselves in that regard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we all need to be honest when it comes to fulfilling the trust that has been entrusted upon us. If you are entrusted with something, fulfill it correctly. Make sure that you return the thing that you are trusted with to the rightful people. Allah says in verse number 58 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah instructs you to fulfill that which you have been entrusted with to the right person upon it being requested or asked upon it being given it should be given to the right people at the right time fulfill the trust whenever it is required of you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in this way we would be able to build a beautiful society a beautiful community we trust each other we know your goods are safe with me your dignity is safe with me your honor for example anything else you may have entrusted me with it's safe with me May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We have complaints of people who come sometimes for a problem to find a solution to their problems and they confide in you. That confidence is actually a trust. When they tell you, you know, I've got this problem. I went through this. For example, someone says, you know, I was affected by a drug addiction at some stage and I was addicted, for example, or I went through a spate where I used to visit the nightclubs and I used to drink and so on. And then you find the sheikh that was spoken to that evening, his whole family knows what happened. And guess what? The neighbors now know and everyone in the masjid knows. So what happened to you? You are so embarrassed. You are upset. I went to get guidance and look at this. The whole world now knows. Be careful. 
if we are advising, I know I use the term Sheikh, but it can be anyone. I'm using it because it's important for us to be careful. You need to have this confidentiality that really is sacred. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. A person coming to you, they've told you, they've laid bare everything in order to seek help, not for you to make the problem worse. So don't go around spreading tales or even if it's spreading the truth, because that was a trust, fulfill it properly. You might break society, community, you will earn the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah. People will start creating rumor about you because you went around speaking about people. Yes, if they've allowed you to give their example. I have had cases where people have come to me for help and later on they say you can give my example in your talks and so on. People will benefit from it. No harm, no problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And Allah says when you are judging between people, be just. Don't favor people based on something material. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and safeguard us. Also, when we are judging, it's important for us to consider what was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the point of justice. This is something important. Allah says, verse number 61 of Surah An-Nisa, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ رَأَيْتَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يَصُدُّونَ عَنْكَ صُدُودًا When they are told to come to the judgment of Allah and His Messenger, you find the hypocrites running away from it. They turn away from it in a big way. They are hypocrites. Here's the solution that Allah has provided, that Rasulullah ﷺ has provided. Here is the shari solution. Would you like it? They say, no, we don't want it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, such people, they may be punished in this world first. Punishment might overtake them. Verse number 62, Allah says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ جَاءُوكَ يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا إِحْسَانًا وَتَوْفِيقًا So do you see if a calamity befalls them because of what they have done? Because of what their hands have earned, if a calamity now befalls them, they will come rushing to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa swearing oaths that you know what, we only intended goodness. We did not really mean bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people, Allah knows about them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they intended and what happened. So the lesson is, if I want to protect myself from this punishment that would be earned because of the doings of my own hands, I need to be a person who realizes when I have disputes, I must resolve them in the proper way. I must choose the method revealed to me, meaning revealed to us as Muslimin, in order to find solution to that problem, whether I like it or not, whether it is in my favor or not. Some people, when it's in their favor, they are quick to run. I want a Sharia solution here. And when it's not in their favor, you are the last person they want to greet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us verse number 82 of Surah An-Nisa to ponder deeply over the verses of the Quran. We read the Quran, you will get a reward. We recite the Quran, you will get a reward. We read through the meanings of the Quran, you will get a reward. But there is a great reward to ponder over the meanings of the verses of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that quite clearly. Verse number 82, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Will they not ponder very deeply over the verses of the Qur'an? Over this Qur'an. It is very, very powerful. There is no conflict or contradiction in this book. Had it been from someone besides Allah, you would have found a lot of contradictions. Allah says, go swim deep into the knowledge of the Qur'an and you will find yourself growing in terms of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and guide us. I want to end on one note. When we greet each other, we need to make sure we realize it's an act of worship. Assalamu alaikum. And we respond wa alaikum as salam. And you may add if you want greater reward, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And you respond better than that greeting or equivalent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells this to us. And in this way, we will save ourselves from a lot of harm. The hadith says, if you want to spread peace, then you must spread the salam correctly and you must know what it means. Verse number 86 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, وَإِذَا حُيِّيتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا 
إن الله كان على كل شيء حسيبا. When you are greeted with a greeting, then respond to it with a better greeting or at least respond equally. For indeed, Allah is taking account of absolutely everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, inshallah. We will continue from there tomorrow if Allah gives us the opportunity. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.